Hey, what's going up, guys? What's going? What the? I just had a stroke. Hey, what's going on, guys? Ender Charizard here, bringing you episode one of Hazardcraft SMP season three. And as you can see around me, I have a lot of things done. Like a lot of stuff has been dealt with, and I haven't even made an episode yet. And I have an excuse for that. So, episode 1 was supposed to be a highlight video of my live stream where I did all this stuff, except that live stream corrupted. And uh, if you want to hear how, well, here's the quick story. Hey, computer, I'm gonna live stream some Minecraft. That alright with you? Nah, G, too little space. You got too many furry videos back there. What? I couldn't hear you. I'm gonna stream Minecraft. My dude, there's no space. My Minecraft? I... I I heard Minecraft. Alright, go ahead. Go ahead. Do it. I don't care. Honestly, I don't have time for this. And so, my footage corrupted. Therefore, this episode's gonna be a little bit different. I'm gonna be going over the server as a whole, what the theme of the server is, and what I've done since uh, you haven't seen any of this yet. It should be said that the server has only been open for five days, but in those five days, a lot has been done. So, uh, off to the left you have a bridge that leads to Ray and Say's house. Chad already has the first shop of the server open, a horse breeding shop. And at the center of spawn is, of course, the Midcastle. Like Season 1, we wanted to kind of do a throwback similar to such. At Midcastle, you'll find some spawn crops you can take and replant, as well as the Tree of Life, which if you enter and follow this dark and ominous tunnel, which uh, could have been... A lot cooler, but I didn't think of any other better design for it. You can climb the ladder onto the castle walls, and up here you'll find a couple neat things. First things first is SMP lore. I'm not going to read it on video. It's basically just all the lore of the past seasons mixed in with the lore of this season, which I will talk about, and the SMP rules, which most of you are familiar with if you've been watching me for a while now because I participated in SMP Season 1, 2, and 2.5, and the rules are pretty much the same. However, what's new this season and what fits into the lore of this season are shrines, kind of based off Legend of Zelda Breath of the Wild, aka Game of the Year 2017. Uh, we copied the idea of shrines, and around the world there are currently five shrines. One cool thing about this season is to keep it active, which we failed to do in Seasons 2 and 2.5, we're going to be doing an update to the server every week. Every week there'll be one update and it'll either be new shrines, hence why there's only five to start because more are coming, or a new plugin or something cool we can't tell you about yet. However, for this first week we only have five shrines to explore. Many of the people on the server have already explored all of them. I purposely have explored none of them so I can show you on recording. So just to the right of our current spawn portal, which is still going to be designed and look cool, that's coming in the future. Also, the nether portal that it leads to is eventually going to be designed and become a nether hub. However, that's all in the future. Right next to that is shrine number one. I tried to design it somewhat similar to the shrines in Zelda Breath of the Wild. Every shrine is different, however, some have similar themes like being a puzzle, a maze, some have mobs you gotta fight past, etc, etc. This first shrine is just a simple and easy maze, and I kind of feel bad because I made all the shrines, therefore I know all the shrines. So, to complete it, you just, you go this way. It's the first shrine, so it's supposed to be really easy, and uh, for doing the shrine, you get one diamond. You're not allowed to come back to shrines and redo them, and therefore keep getting diamonds, for example, like using the shrines as a way to just grind diamonds. You're only allowed to do them once, well, that's not true, you can do them as many times as you want, but you're only allowed to reap benefits and reap rewards from them once. So that's the only time I can get the diamond from the chest, but I can go take this diamond back to my house and show off the land both me and Rosalie have built. My land is actually very close to spawn, and uh, this season, hey, say got on, what up? This season, I'm living with Rosalie, aka Dizzily, by in-game name, and we kind of have a nice fence set up. We're going to finish this more decorated style of fencing all the way down to the water eventually. But for now, this is as much as we got. And it's really well designed. Also, I should say right now, I don't deserve much credit for any of this. All of the cool stuff you see on this land, I did like 20% of. Meanwhile, Rosalie did like the other 80. Uh, for example, that custom tree over there, Rosalie did. I, I did like the farm and the chicken pen, and even Rosalie designed the roof of the chicken pen. Like, I didn't do much. I just, I didn't do much. So this is our main hub for now because we don't have a house built yet and just have some chests of items here. One cool thing I found the other day was a punch one book. We also have a couple saddles already as well as some horse armors, which is 
Very helpful. We've got just some standard blocks, more standard blocks, and a food chest set up in this main hub. Uh, we have a mine all the way down to Y11, and one cool thing I can show you via the magic of editing is this railway system. So Anthony lives about a thousand blocks away from us, across an entire ocean. To travel to his house, normally you have to boat. However, I built an underground tunnel that goes about a thousand blocks. It takes roughly a minute and a half in real life to get to his house via this track. That's how far away it is. But I decided to link our houses together because, you know, why not? And via the magic of editing, I'm going to take a minecart there. All right, 1,000 blocks later and traveling an entire ocean's length, we have made it to the end of the minecart track. And after reaching the top of this little water elevator I made, we're going to get to Anthony's island that he has claimed for himself. He hasn't built much yet, but uh, I've been trying to help him out since he's kind of new to the game and give him pointers. So I figured a nice thing to do when we get to the top is build a nice little terminal house area for you to go in and out of when either of us want to visit each other. So when we get to the top here, this is just a nice little house that I tried to design a little simple and neatly. And this is the underground passage terminal. So Anthony's land. It's quite, quite nice. He got like a flower biome on an island, which I've never really seen before. This is supposed to be a cathedral, apparently. And his land is riddled with crucifixes, interestingly enough, for someone who's not really religious. I'm, I'm not sure about the strategy there, or the mindset behind such. But he's currently building into this hill, and like into the ground, and this is going to be his house. I also helped him, slash kind of bargained with him, to get these two wolves. So he did something for me, and in return I let him have the coordinates to two wolf pets. So uh, yeah, that's cool. He has doggos now. However... That's pretty much his land. Like I said, he hasn't done too much. Nothing crazy. Uh, and one thing I should mention is we try to keep this season mostly vanilla. I said we'll add some plugins eventually, but for now it's mostly vanilla. However, we do have one plugin and one plugin only, and that is Essentials. So with Essentials, I can do slash home and immediately come back home instead of traveling the thousand block distance via minecart again. So I guess to wrap up this video, I'm just going to go over some of the minor things I haven't yet around me and Rosalie's land. We've talked most about the chicken farm, the regular farm, this custom tree Rosalie built. It's pretty nice so far. Rosalie's also working on a windmill. Really like this. I don't know what we're going to use the inside for yet, but we're still debating. Still debating. There's also this custom-made tree, which we're storing some more items in. For example, all of our ores. Uh, I can put the diamond away now. Rosalie logged off with about a stack of diamonds on her person. So even though this only looks like a stack and eight, we technically have like two stacks and eight diamonds so far, which is crazy for only five days. My diamond luck has been insane. I just go strip mining and I come back with like half a stack. It's crazy. Uh, we also have a couple emeralds, uh, an efficiency one pickaxe, and a fortune three pickaxe. That also is kind of the reason why we have so many diamonds already. We have another food chest in here for backup supplies, agriculture chest items and more just blocks however the one cool thing i like about this tree is something rosalie did just yesterday we had an enchantment table with bookshelves around it so that you could do level 30s and rosalie moved it and asked me to try and find it it took me almost five minutes to find where she moved the level 30 enchantment table to and then i found this it fits so nice in the tree the bookshelves fit in everything so that you still do level 30s. And there's a chest up here for lapis, an anvil for combining stuff, and a crafting table for making, you know, different things you want to enchant. So that's really cool. From close up, you can kind of see the bookshelves in the tree. However, like, once you get 20, 30 blocks away, they start to slowly disappear. And, like, from this distance, you can't even tell, I would say. I would, I would argue you can't really tell from this distance that there's an enchantment area inside the top of the tree. So that's really cool. This is going to be our house. This is the walkway to our eventual mansion of a house that we're going to build. Um, and this is kind of the rough layout for where some of the stuff in the house is going to go and the perimeter of the house is going to be located. And we finally got a sheep farm done a couple days ago, which is going to be important for pixel arts and other, you know, design purposes. So that's nice. Real hype. Finally, I, I thought I was done. I have about six wolf friends. These these five doggos were all unnamed, and then May, my, my one sweet doggo. So, that's pretty much our land. Again, I apologize for my original episode one corrupting. I just wasn't paying attention to my PC storage. On a different note, uh, fun fact, we are actually 
set up right next to shrine number three. So I figured I might as well go do shrine number three this episode to keep you all entertained because I really haven't done anything proactive this episode other than shrine number one. The rest of this episode has just been showing stuff off. Um, so I figured and kind of felt bad that I might as well do shrine number three since it's 20 blocks away from our land anyways. And this one is another maze, I believe. And again, I kind of built this so I remember the path. I'm pretty sure you can't. Yeah, if you go this way, you get stuck. Spoilers for anyone who's a member of the server. Speaking of which, there's about 19 members of the server. Only 16 have logged on so far, so not everyone has joined yet. And out of the 16, four people are at zero deaths. I am one of them. Um, everyone else has taken a death so far. I think this is the pathway I need to take in order to do this maze, if I'm correct. Which I believe I am. So, this gets us an infinity book. That'll be super helpful. Um, <laughs> Say's trying to take a nap. Now I gotta find my way out of this maze. This one's a little bit bigger. The, the shrines are going to get more and more difficult as they go on, so the more we add to the server, the more difficult they're going to get. Um, however, I think that's pretty much it for this episode. I don't have much else to go over. I apologize that most of this episode was showing off stuff rather than doing things. But next episode, we're going to the nether, and I'll probably do like one or two more shrines as well. So that'll be hype. Look forward to it. Also, I want to give a personal apology to all of my viewers who actually care about my channel still. Uh, there's not many of you out there. However, I made a video about a month ago saying I was going to start a new upload schedule, which had me uploading like every other day, and that has fallen flat on its face. Uh, that would suggest I upload three or four times a week. I've only been uploading one or two times a week. I'm going to go back to that upload schedule of three or four times a week. My channel's going to be rejuvenated, and hopefully uh, we can have some fun again, because I really missed YouTube. Therefore, thank you for watching. Have a lovely, lovely day, and I'll see you next time. Peace.